Hey guys, and welcome to Should You Buy It, where all we do is talk a little bit about the game and whether or not we think it's worth the cost. In this episode, we'll be playing The Forest, the open world horror survival game where you have crash landed on an island paradise. Oh wait, there's just one problem. The island is infested with mutants and cannibals. Now the first question that we always cover in these videos is what stage of development is the game in? And in this case, The Forest is in full release and available on PC and PlayStation 4 for $20. So what exactly is The Forest? Well, The Forest is a survival game in which you will be attacked by a lot of very hungry cannibals that just want to nibble on them fingers. Your goal is to do everything in your power to survive and hopefully get off the island alive while finding Timmy. I mean, geez, could they really have chosen a more creepy name for this kid? On the surface, the plot is quite simplistic, but if you're willing to look deeper into it, you might find that there are quite a few interesting parts to the story that you never knew existed. For an example, there is a camp where you will come across a blueprint of a church. At first, you may think nothing of it, but later you find out they were also once normal humans, which have now turned into cannibals. Now, as far as the main story goes, it basically boils down to finding Timmy by any means possible and figuring out how to make it out alive. We don't want to go too much into detail here as it could easily spoil it for you, but if you're willing to explore the different endings and side plots, which are found in the notes, you'll find the story to be actually surprisingly good. The combat in the forest is definitely one of its main features as you will constantly be dealing with an onslaught of cannibals wanting to come and eat you. It's pretty simple, but that doesn't necessarily make it bad. You get two to three types of attacks with almost every weapon. For an example here, you can use the very first weapon you find, which is the plane axe, to do a normal swing, a heavy swing, or even a block in order to reduce the damage. The only exception to this rule is probably the ranged weapons. I definitely didn't expect it, but when we shot the bow and managed to land a headshot, it was very nice that pretty much every enemy would immediately meet their end. We also found it nice to see that you could make several different arrow types such as poison, fire, and bone arrows, each of which were great when used for what they were made for. Speaking of which, let's move into the crafting. Crafting in the forest has a unique twist to it. When you craft things, you will open up a big window that doesn't pause the game, I might add, where you can try to put various items together in order to create something useful. Once you have crafted something, you will remember it and see what is needed to craft it again by mousing over the cogwheel in the middle of the screen. Sadly, there is only about 40 to 50 of these recipes and almost everything else will have to be found within the caves. The caves in the forest honestly scared the living crap out of me. Oh, oh, geez. oh geez. Oh god. Can I go back up? Go back up, go back up. To be fair though, I can't even watch a horror movie with my wife without hiding behind her, so I may not be the best judge when it comes to how scary something is. As fate would have it though, there are many important items found within the caves, such as the modern axe and the modern bow, which are the best weapons within the game. Other items such as the rebreather and the climbing axe are also found within the caves and are necessary to get to the final boss. One nice thing though is that if you don't want to go into the caves, you can choose to stay out of them. You just will never be able to complete the story. Don't worry though as there is still plenty to do above ground like build a base and some quite interesting traps. The base building can be complex or simple, whatever you prefer. For example, you could build yourself a little pre-made cabin and deposit the necessary ingredients to the blueprint, or you could make your own custom compound and home like we chose to do. However, it is probably a good idea to keep in mind that the longer you stay in one area, the more cannibals you are more likely to attract. So now let's move into the pros and cons section of the video. First stuff for the pros is that the game actually focuses on the survival aspect and not just the random killing of enemies. You will constantly have to maintain your hunger, thirst, and armor while you are being bombarded by a seemingly endless number of cannibals. Next up would be that the AI in the game was actually really good.
What I meant to say was that the AI was really unique. An example of this would be how if you killed the leader of a cannibal group, the rest would flee in terror, or if you stay in one place for too long, they will remember where you are and send more and more enemies to come and murder you. And lastly would be the graphics, as they helped immerse you into the game, and not that they were amazing, but that they enhanced the horror aspect of the game and did well to fit the overall theme. Now for the cons. First up we have that there was desync issues on multiplayer. It was mostly little things like we would see enemies in different places sometimes, or one player would be lagging around, just little stuff like that. We're not sure what really caused it, we could think it's possibly the Steam servers, but it's most likely something to do with the game. Second is that there was a lack of meaningful crafting recipes. Now there's about 45 to 50 within the game, but unfortunately a lot of these are just repeats of the same thing like being able to make a healing mix or a healing mix plus, and to us that was a big downside considering this is a survival and crafting game. Lastly we have that you had to read things in order to understand the story and what was going on in the world. If you chose not to do this, all you got was a checklist that basically said build a campfire, get food, save Timmy, and that's about where it ended. Don't get me wrong, there is some really cool story here, but you have to be willing to read and look at pictures and look at side stories to understand what is even going on. And now it's time for the rating for the game, and when we rate games, we want to get one hour of enjoyment out of every one dollar that we spent on the game. So for this game in particular, In the Forest, we would want to get roughly 20 hours of enjoyment out of the $20 that we both spent. And after putting 24 played hours into this game, we give it six out of 10 potatoes. Yeah, The Forest wasn't a bad game, but it also wasn't exactly the best game either. Don't get me wrong, we enjoyed our time with it, but it did start to get very repetitive. Sadly, they didn't really innovate on anything other than the AI, which was actually really interesting as to how it would interact with you. We think The Forest is a good game. If you are looking for a horror survival game, you will probably really, really enjoy this. But to the average gamer, or to someone who plays a lot of survival games, it could be a bit of a coin toss as to whether or not you will get your 20 hours worth. Now if you guys want more money saving content, consider subscribing to our channel where we release new videos every single week where we spend the money so you don't have to. Make sure you guys smash that like button and as always, thank you so much for watching and we will see you next time.